Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com. Today we're going to take a look at using tool wrap compared to aluminum foil for doing heat treating of stainless steel as well as some uh, tool steels. So anyway, this is just an experiment. I had done several heat treating videos and, and actually quite a few people asked me why we couldn't use aluminum foil, which is much more affordable than the expensive stainless tool wrap. Uh, so this little video kind of demonstrates why uh, tool wrap is actually required. So just to back up a little bit, uh, tool wrap is a stainless steel, very thick foil. It comes in two different thicknesses. Number 309 uh, is good for heating up to 2,240 degrees. Um, and number 321 is used on uh, heat treating required up to 2,000 degrees. And what you do is you create an envelope and you double um, fold each seam and, and tap or press that seam very tightly with the end result trying to be an airtight envelope. The more sealed it is, the less oxygen gets in and the less decarb you end up on your finished product. We're going to try this with aluminum foil. In this particular case, Reynolds wrap. What I did was I folded this, so we're actually going to use a double thickness of tin foil. And I did, you know, basically what I would do with tool wrap. So I created an envelope, I, you know, I placed a knife inside that envelope. And then I, I folded and double folded each one of the seams and creased those with a heavy object. I just use, the, you know, the flat surface of a hammer. And then both ends, I also double folded and, and, and really creased the seam very nicely. And when heat treating, you know, stainless steel, it's, it's not done in a forge usually. It's usually done in a, in a heat treating oven, so you have pri uh, precise uh, temperature as well as time controls. So all of these tool wrapped knives are, are put into my heat treating oven. And while I was at it, I added the one aluminum foil wrapped knife right here. All of these blades are AEBL stainless. <clears throat> so I let them run through its whole heat treating cycle. Um, I plate pool my knives. I use a, a aluminum tubing uh, that's secured or, or screwed onto a, a carpenter's vise and then I'm able to clamp down on that vise. So both plates come to get together on the blades and they really prevent warping at all. Um, and then you blow air around the knife. And in this case, because I'm using tubing, I can also um, blow air through the tubing to let it cool very quickly. And then I repeat the process. You know, with, I, I can basically plate quench two knives at a time with this setup, as long as they're both the same thickness material. It only takes a few minutes for the um, blade itself to <clears throat> cool down, and then you can un unpack it from the tool wrap. This is now a, a tool wrap knife going into the plates, and then this is the aluminum foil knife. And if you can take a close look at what happened, and uh, the main reason why you can't use aluminum foil is that all of the aluminum foil melted. That's completely gone. Um, actually, some of it is embedded into the into the blank itself. So, no benefit at all uh, to using a, or attempting to use aluminum foil instead of tool wrap. And in hindsight, really kind of a silly experiment. You know, all you had, all I had to do was look at the at the melting temperature of the aluminum foil, but uh, it, it definitely gives a good visual representation. But I did learn a couple of things. If you just stick with me another minute. <clears throat> So this is the aluminum foil wrapped knife, and you can tell that there's a lot of decarb on it. Uh, oxygen got at the blade during the heat treating process. The knife below it was um, wrapped in tool wrap, so that doesn't have much decarb on it or scale on it at all. Now what I learned is that even if you heat treat it, well first of all, before I get to that, um, another experiment on the same video is I always um, 
did my Sub-Zero quench with just dry ice, blocks of ice. And I was told that it, it's good to make a slurry with diesel fuel. Now, I may have used a little bit too much diesel, um, but I added uh, diesel fuel to a cooler, and then I, I put a couple blocks of uh, dry ice into it, in, you know, in, in small pieces. And really, all I did was make a mix. I mean, it definitely did the, the Sub-Zero quench very nicely, but it really stunk up. It, it probably ruined my cooler. And it, the end result was a giant frozen uh, diesel slushy. Uh, that was a real pain in the neck to get the blades out of. So, unless you use a lot less diesel fuel and, and a, you know, a higher ratio of dry ice to that diesel, um, I, I would probably stick with, stick with a different, um, a different slurry solution for the Sub Zero punch. <clears throat> what I did learn is that the scale cleans up pretty easily. I've moved over. This is a, a um, surface grinding attachment from my Oregon Blade Maker uh, 2x72 grinder. And I surface grind all of the blades after heat treating. So these are the tool wrap blades as well as that aluminum foil wrap blade. And they all cleaned up very quickly. And, and this kind of surprised me. Even the knife that had the decarb, it only took a couple of additional uh, strokes on the surface grinder to clean up the carbonization. And I heat treated them. The, the heat treating is ended, ended up being the same for both knives. So really, the de, you know, you're saving yourself the carbonization, but really, if you wanted to not heat treat at all, it might not be that, that horrible a deal uh, because the decarb cleans up pretty easily. Anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed the little experiment. Uh, please check us out on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com. You can check out my knives at BergKnifeMaking.com. And please join us on our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. Uh, in addition to that, Jason Northgard and I uh, just put out a book called Introduction to Knife Making. Uh, that is available either on my website or direct from Amazon.com. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.